our recording, I think. Okay, we're good. Okay, so I wanna go ahead and get started. I think we'll have a lot more people jumping on the call as we go, but I am happy that we get to hear from Melissa Grable tonight. She is, you all know her, she's amazing. She is like the busiest person we all know, I think, and makes it happen. She's a workhorse and she like, she just gets it done and she's no nonsense and no fluff and I love, love, love that about her. Um, but she is really amazing at Instagram and converting people from Instagram to customers to coaches. She by far more than any other coach on our team converts people from Instagram. So almost all she's, I don't even know. She can tell us how many months in success club. It's a lot. Um, she's been in success club most every month. She's been a coach with the exception of like two months ever. Mm -hmm that yeah and um and it was september not this year but like <laughs> last year and this year she had an awesome month but um anyway it just she's amazing at hitting her numbers every single month and she does so much of that from instagram and i think well i know it's more than really anyone else on our team so she's going to tell us how she does that how like what her conversations look like what her posts look like how she is converting so many people and getting to know them on Instagram to convert them to challengers and customers and just have all those conversations. Cause she always has a lot of conversations going and most of them are from Instagram, which is really cool. And I think it's a need that a lot of us, um, a lot of us have and a sort of a skill a lot of us maybe are lacking. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Melissa. Okay, can you hear me? I don't, you don't need to screen share, do you? No, <laughs> I'm not that fancy. <laughs> Making sure yeah. yeah. there's okay. no, no graphics. No, I, yeah, Nicole put everybody to shame. <laughs> I'm not the teacher at all. Um, but you can hear me though, cause I'm on a new computer. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Well, I did write some notes because it's a little late in the day for me. I've been up since three 30. Actually, I woke up worrying about this call <laughs> because I want to make sure I deliver. But at the same time, I personally do not feel like I'm anything special. Um, in Instagram, I'm just kind of being myself, but I did write down some things just to kind of give a flow because I know that there's varying degrees of coaches on the team from starting points. So, um, but just to back up a little bit about me, I've been a coach since March of 2016 and I found Corey actually on her Facebook, um, what do you call that, business page. For whatever reason, it must have been an ad or something, I don't even know, came down and I had didn't even realize I was following her for a couple of months before um, just one day I happened to be on Facebook when she posted about her lawyer story and staying home with her kids. And it was a really bad day that day at work. And I'm like, I need to do that. So I was pretty easy sell. <laughs> um, although I could not stay up for the team call or the, what did we used to do that where everybody kind of did a video. I forget what it was back then, but I had to get the replay just like I usually do for the team calls because I go to bed early. Um, so anyway, I've been a nurse now almost, it'll be 25 years soon, um, in like another couple months. And um, I'm just, I just felt like I was burned out. So I really um, kind of came into fitness when my son was born. And I, but I just took it a little bit too far and um, kind of had an eating disorder that I had to work through. So you know, there was a lot of like choppy years in there and I really wasn't doing fitness right or nutrition right. And so when I found Corey, I thought, well, this is just something, I don't know, I just felt pulled to it. So, and then of course, when I did join in the community and the team and everything, I just knew that's where I was supposed to be. So still working on the whole job front, trying to get out of that situation. Um, part of it's just nervous to make that jump, but then the other part of it is it's just been my life for so long and it's kind of hard sometimes. I think that's a limiting belief for me. So anyway, that's just a little bit about me. Um, but I did write some notes because I wanted to make sure I was clear on just basically how I became an Instagram person because I was not Instagram, never had an account, not even when I was in the beginning part of my coaching career. Um, I just didn't believe in it. I thought Instagram was for young kids and my mother was on it. And my mom, she kept after me. She's like, you know, I really think you should join Instagram because people are selling stuff on there. <laughs> she, she had it all wrong. So I, I just, I thought, well, you know, I'm not sure. And I remember the night I signed up, I had my daughter do my 
profile. I had her do my picture. She set me up. I had no clue what I was doing. And, you know, it just sort of evolved since then. And I will say, no matter what I tell you tonight, it could all be different next week. It could be, um, it just constantly has changed. And what I started in the beginning isn't what I'm doing now. Back then, and I don't even know when I joined. I mean, maybe a year after I became a coach, I don't even know. Um, we used to just kind of go down and just, if it looked like a human that you would be friends with and they looked normal, you just hit follow. So follow, follow, follow. And that is not the way I do it now. In fact, right now, and I don't have a high following and I don't choose to have a high following. I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like it's sort of like success club points. I don't feel like I could be a good coach if I hit high numbers. And so I kind of feel that way with my Instagram and I'm actually in the process now of unfollowing a lot of people. So there in turn, my following has been dropping and that's okay by me because I don't feel you need a high following in order to have a successful business. Um, and I will tell you tonight while we're on the call, Jennifer Schlifting, which I see right here, she came from Instagram and she's a coach on my team. So she, um, and I have her, I have Brett, um, and I have Lindsay Weber. Um, those are just three off the top. I wanted to go down through my downline and tell you how many, but I can tell you probably 75% of my coaches are all Instagram. Now they're not all working the business, obviously, but um, I don't know. I just, I kind of felt like that's just what everybody did. I'm, you know, I didn't realize I was doing anything <laughs> out of the ordinary, but anyway, I, I did, I glow. Um, yeah. I grow slow. I don't feel like I need to go after a hundred people. Like you'll hear that on trainings, like follow a hundred people a day, unfollow a hundred people a day or whatever. I don't even, I don't want to get an Instagram jail. I've already had been hacked once. And that was awful because I felt like my whole world was going to, um, crash down because that's where most of my business was. So when I got back on Instagram after that hacking, I have like this big two part, whatever it is. I don't even know what the, I had to write down the big long password. I mean, you definitely want to protect yourself there, but also I created a business account maybe just a year ago. Um, Brittany Oliver actually was telling me about that. And, and so I decided to do that so that I could look at my insights, but as a whole, I'm just going to be honest. Most of my Instagram relationships and the people I convert and maybe Jennifer can even attest to this. I just became friends with them first. Um, I don't even know half of the people, how I met them. We even talk about that sometimes. Like, how did we even come across each other? I don't remember. She's a nurse. I'm a nurse. You know, you have to pick accounts that you, um, you jive with, like you just like teachers and nurses. I mean, I have a lot of those on my team and working moms. And I like to follow like, um, farmhouse decor, just houses in general, like that's sort of like where I gravitate. So I don't even look at the fitness hashtags. I don't even look at the nutrition ones really for that matter. What I'm finding now though, that seems to be the problem is that when I do look at something that I like, there's a lot of bloggers under there and they have a high following. I don't, I just ignore those. I, I, I probably could go to theirs and dig a little bit deeper, but if I'm being honest, I really just don't find joy in that anymore. Um, so my, my growing on Instagram has slowed down tremendously. So I need to get a little bit better with that. But anyway, um, talked about that and way back in the beginning too, that was back when we posted the shaker cup and our little beach body graphics. And like you threw a quote up there with no story and definitely, definitely have evolved. So my posts um, and I don't post every day on Instagram. Um, I post, I try to post every day on Facebook. So it's a little bit of a different feel. Like I don't feel, I feel more um, free maybe, I guess is the word on Instagram because I don't, it's a whole nother crowd for me. It's people that I don't know. Uh, I have some family members over there, but like none of my in-laws are over there. Um, you know, a lot of my coworkers aren't over there. I mean, some of them are, but I feel like I can be me. You won't see the same, like I don't do Facebook stories. And when Instagram stories came out, I was like, I'm not doing that either. I don't even know what that is. And here it is that that's really, I have the most fun in Instagram stories um, because I can be me and people come to expect that consistent, you know, you feel like you're being boring, but I'll tell you, in fact, this is an example. A couple of weeks ago, I did not post it all on a Sunday until about two 
a.m. or 2 p.m. And usually, because I still get up early on the, on the weekends, I usually get on very early. I do my little Bible devotional. Like people have come to expect what to find with my stories. And because I hadn't posted all day, um, they, I was getting messages. Are you okay? Are you, I mean, that really truly does happen. I, I always thought coaches were just saying that, but I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I just, you know, took a little break. Like, and it's just amazing to me that people notice. So being consistent is one of my tips. I actually had five of five of them, but um, backing up a little bit to the postings, like my post, most of the time I will cross post the same thing with a little bit of tweak. Um, but sometimes I'll just put it an Instagram post on that I will not put on Facebook. So it really just depends, but I don't feel like you should like break yourself trying to get a post up on Instagram um, every single day. In fact, it's probably better if you don't, I find. Um, but the stories, yes, you definitely want to be in your stories every single day um, because that's really where you can be you and you can invite and you can follow up in a sense um, generally much more freer than you would in a post because I really don't feel, and, and I'm, it's something I need to work on, but I, I like to write <laughs> who knew. Um, but I don't really think people read the whole thing. So you just have to really watch and kind of just differ your post a little bit. Like sometimes just make a little tiny caption and then other times people will read. Um, but if it gets to the point where you're like continuing on in the comments, then you probably went too long and I'm guilty of that. I've done that. So, um, we talked a little bit about the following going into to my tips though, showing up in your stories every day. And I will tell you, I have the same sequence of stories pretty much, well, Monday through Friday for sure. Um, everybody knows I'm an early riser. Everybody knows that I do my workouts in the morning. Um, everybody knows I do a little spiel, like four, four slides long <laughs> before I go into my workout every single morning. Um, and I feel like I'm boring, but people watch them. Whether or not they click through, I don't know. But I've got the, the amount of people watching them. And, um, and I do get comments back and messages. And that's where the conversations start. And I do a lot of polls. I do a lot of um, questions. And even some of the posts that I might not even have a poll or a question, but I'm saying a question or I'm saying a comment or something. I get a lot of people who respond back to that in a, in a DM. So for whatever reason. For a sec. And your, yeah. little, your little, um, when you talk before you work out, what do you usually say? Like, what? Well, well, that's a good question. Um, it kind of varies. I generally will talk about either maybe what's happening in that day. Like I, like today, for instance, I was going to an orthopedic for my arm and I talked about that and how I just need to get this taken care of. I think I talked about that. I either talked about that yesterday or today. I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm going to talk about until I'm talking about it. And sometimes it's a little bit of tough love, especially after I do a workout because then I do four more clips. Um, so it's a lot in the morning. I, I front load a lot of my stories in the beginning because once I'm at work, I don't really post a whole lot. Maybe my lunch. That's a lot of like, this is what's going on today. Kind of. Yeah, this is what's going on. This is how I'm feeling. Uh, maybe how my night went. Like if it was like not such a great night, which is a rarity, but, um, yeah, it just, it's basically just, and like the other day, yesterday, I talked about 30 day breakaway starting. And I, of course, I never say the word what it is. I don't talk about like, I don't say Shakeology, you know, I don't do any of that, but um, I'll talk about it. And I've done I'll also sometimes if I have time before I leave for work, I'll do a little video, video clip of um, like getting ready to leave for work. And if I have my shake and then I start talking about that and I can get a little tough love like you know with that and it's usually generally related to maybe a message that I got from somebody else um, who may have given me an objection of some kind I will bring that up in the story and um, I'll tell you some people take offense to that and they have gotten back to me and they, they think I'm talking to them so sometimes I'll preface my message and say look I'm not I'm talking to the general population because I hear it more than once because I don't want to ever single out people but people do take things personally very very quickly. So I have to be a little bit careful of that. Um, but backing up to the morning too, with the workouts, my dog, I think my following really started to increase because of my dog, <laughs> Jazzy. Um, and now she's gotten older the last year or so. She hasn't been as active in my workouts, but like if I was doing a plank, she'd be like army crawling under my stomach, you know, like she's playing with her toy and people just get a kick out of that. And so Jazzy is 
definitely a love. <laughs> People message me more about Jazzy than probably anything else. Um, so Jazzy's in my story quite a lot. So I think the dog, like I don't have a baby. So I know some coaches have like babies who are like, you know, people come and watch them just for that. Mine is just my Jack Russell. So, <laughs> um, but Jazzy's a big part of that. So weekends for stories though, too, I'm a little bit different. I mean, I still do my workout. I still do like the, um, if it's a workout day, um, I still do a little morning talk, so to speak. Um, same thing, like what my plan is for that day, you know, especially like Sundays, I'll talk about food prepping and I'm, I'm kind of like instituting the health and fitness part of it right in the beginning of the day. Um, and then I get some comments about that and then that just opens up some conversations too. So I think it's, when you're in stories, I think the important thing is that you really, um, be relatable and really authentic and I have gone through some tough seasons of life. Like in 2017, we had a lot of deaths in the family. Work, I had just transitioned to another position that was highly stressful, which I'm still in. Um, and it was just overall a tough year. And I brought that out in my stories. I, I am not the coach that's going to be jumping around my kitchen, singing and dancing, pouring my energize. That's not me. Um, I am like, this is my energy. I don't even call it go, go juice or whatever the coaches call it. Like I, it's my energy. Like I'm very <laughs> matter of fact, it's just what it is. So, um, you know, for whatever reason, people know I drink it. People know like I'm very matter of fact and I'm just real, but I will talk about the struggles in my life. And of course COVID hit in the spring and my entire work world turned upside down and is still upside down. And it just seems like it's getting worse. And yeah, it's just like, it feels like it'll never go away. And I am really real about that. And in the beginning, when I was doing those long hours, when I was, you know, and we're still wearing all the PPE, I mean, it gets tiring and it's, you, you don't want to be complaining all the time, but it's funny because my son watches it. And my son <laughs> told me one day, he said, mom, you got to happy up because you look miserable in your story. So <laughs> I just thought that was cute. <laughs> so, but obviously I'm not, you know, I'm not rainbows and butterflies. I mean, I'm just, this is the way it is. So, but I do try, then I thought, God, I, think, I think his words were, you're really looking depressed these days. <laughs> so anyway, you got to be a little bit happy too. So um, my next tip would be, um, and we talked a little bit about this, just not having to post on your feed every day. What I do in, on Instagram, which is, a, you know, I try to do on Facebook too, but a lot of Facebook, um, the likes and the comments are all from you guys, but on Instagram, it's not. So, which is a good thing um, because I'm able to take the people who have liked or commented on my post, which I don't get a whole lot of comments. The engagement isn't all that great and it waxes and wanes depending. I, I don't know why the algorithm is the way it is, but I will reach out to every single person that's part of my power hour and either just open up a conversation or flat out invite them. I figure if it's a call to action post, it's free game. And for whatever reason on Instagram, I don't feel shy with inviting. I just do it. I mean, I don't know those people. And if they say no, and they defriend me or whatever you call it on Instagram, then so be it. It's, it's no worries for me. Like I just, to me, it's you, the worst thing they can say is no. The worst thing they can do is which isn't really a worse thing. Like if they un, un whatever, unfollow you. Um, but that's what I do. And the same thing in my stories, I will go back through and just either have a conversation with people or, um, message them, follow up with them. The same people watch my stories every day. Um, mostly. And then I, as you, as you increase, you know, I don't know, th there are new people that kind of trickle in there. Um, but you don't invite them every day, but sometimes, I mean, I get ghosted a lot and I don't let that deter me. People get busy. I get it. People may not, they don't know me. So I think of what I would be like if I was in their shoes and I probably wouldn't respond either. And I never use scripts. Like I just don't, that whole copy paste thing, I think I, I can smell it a mile away. So, and I've been that, I've gotten those messages and it drives me crazy. And it's people like that, that drive me crazy with what we do, because I feel like they give everything a bad name by doing that. So I do a lot of voice and I do, I just talk normal. Like I just invite them and say, Hey, you know, you've been looking at my story and are you ever, have you ever thought about doing what I'm doing? Or, you know, just to actually it was yesterday. Um, I've had the same 
person continually like my posts, continually watch my stories, but every time I message her and, and invite her, she, she sees it, but she never responds back. So I thought yesterday, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. And I flipped it a little bit and I said, Hey, you know, I, I know that it's probably, um, I don't know what exactly I said, but I, I know I probably must be annoying you because you don't respond. Um, and I just hope you know that, I mean, I'm not going to bite you. It's okay if you tell me no, but just let me know. I mean, should I stop bothering you? That got a response. She responded back and said, no, no, that's fine. I just, I'm just not interested. I'm like, Hey, that's cool. That's fine. It's not, <laughs> you're not hurting my feelings, but it's funny how, like, if you call them out that they're more apt to respond. So that's, you know, that's just a little tip that happened yesterday. Um, and I, my other tip was, I didn't even number these. I don't even know how many I had, but being real is really, I mean, people can spot fake people. I can spot a fake person. I can tell when somebody's not telling me the truth. Like I, you have that instinct about you and you can tell if somebody's really being genuine. And I feel like your invites, like if you're afraid of inviting and you're afraid of sounding salesy, then you're probably either have a lack of belief in it or you have um, some kind of limiting belief in yourself and you have that whole sales mindset. And Bob Heilig does great podcasts on that. So if you're struggling with that part of it, I would definitely listen to him. Um, those types of things have helped me. Um, just, you're just being real. You're just talking to somebody like you would be telling them that, you know, this restaurant was really good and you should try it out. And yeah, I know you don't like Japanese, but just try it, you know, something like that. Um, Cause it's, you know, fitness isn't everybody's game. Um, the other thing I do, and I talked a little bit about this with the post when I don't just, it depends really, I guess I should say, but most of the time I will just go to the person's page. If it's somebody that maybe have found me through a hashtag, which I suck at hashtags. I, I just, I don't know. They drive me crazy. I'm not one to go research hashtags and I don't have like groups of them. I'm very, um, <laughs> I don't know what the word would be. I can't even think anymore. My elbow's killing me. Um, I'm just like impulsive, I guess. I just, whatever like hits me as I'm writing the post is what I put in my hashtags. <laughs> but I do make it related to the, uh, to the post. But you can look in your insights for your business um, account if you have one. And it will tell you how many people looked at this post based on the hashtags, I believe. How many like profile visits did you get out of that post? How many um, people bookmarked it? Um, which you definitely should be asking that in your post, you know, bookmark this post, save for later. I've been doing that a little bit more often, especially with recipes and such, um, because that that's engagement. Um, so, but I will go to their page and I will, I will look at their page and I will comment on a few things. I will message them if I have a question about something and I don't ask like, Oh, what's your dog's name? Like that to me is fake. Um, but I will ask a genuine question depending on what it is. A lot of the people that I have been looking at lately are like the farmhouse decor, that whole, I'm not even on that bandwagon. I don't even understand it. That whole like to know it thing. <laughs> Seems like there's like a whole bunch of that everywhere, but I might just ask them a question about something or say, you know, like, it's so neat to see people. Like I look for inspiration here on IG. So it's so great to connect with you. And then a lot of times they'll follow me back. Now, whether they unfollow me a couple days later, I don't know. I don't keep track of that, but um, I do not have a high following and I do not feel like you need one to be successful. You say that you have like 3,500 or something, right? I mean, it's no, no, it's like 3,000. It's, it's low. Oh, so it's, only, <laughs> it's not like over 10, like you. <laughs> That's not like 10 people. You know? No, it's not 10 people. I mean, if you had 3,000 people on your team, that would be pretty, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And that's the way I look at it. Like you, you don't even need, um, and you hear that all the time. Like coaches have like, they started out with 200 followers. Well, I mean, I didn't even start out with Instagram and I, I never thought I would ever be on Instagram. So, but that's where I feel like I have the most fun maybe. And I guess that's maybe portrayed better over there than maybe Facebook. Um, because a lot of the people, which you would think would be odd because the people on Facebook know me from somewhere else, whether it be work, family, distant friends, high school, you know, whatever. But um, for whatever reason, and I've had people convert that way, but um, what I do when I convert them on Instagram, when they say they're interested and they want to know more information, 
most of the time I can get them to convert to come over to Facebook and I friend request them over there or they friend request me, then I add them into those info pages because that is where the magic happens for me. Because then I tag them in things I think will resonate with them and then um, sell the challenge pack that way because, and then get them in the group. And I've had a few people, I'd say a handful of people in the time I've been a coach tell me, no, I'm not on Facebook. I don't, I don't, um, I don't do Facebook. And I have been able to talk them into doing a dummy account, you know, like they just sign on to Facebook just to be in the group. And they've done that. Not everybody. I've had a couple that just won't. And then it's difficult for me then because I'm very, um, I'm not tech savvy at all. I do not have an email newsletter that I routinely send out. It's something I've struggled with. I need to actually have the time, I think, to sit down and really focus on that. And I just haven't had it. Um, and I, I just kind of put that stuff on the back burner. But I feel like an email. Which it should be, honestly, it should be on the back burner. Like when you have such yeah. a long amount of time, it really shouldn't be at the top of the list. So. Right. And it's not at the top of my list. I'd rather have the conversations with people. Yeah. And That's where, I mean, I, want, I hope everybody takes, the, takes that away from this. Like if you have a limited amount of time, that goes at the very bottom. Conversations are number one. Always, always, always. Yes. In yes. producing activities, conversations, number one. Always. Yeah, totally. That's that's and I, I've been kind of toying around with like, do I need a virtual assistant? Because you know, as you get busier, like I haven't even been able to focus on my new, like the what do you call those? The beach body leads that they give you because there's just, I have so many people coming at me. It's, and I just, I have to just put tunnel vision on and just focus on the people that I'm, that actually are talking to me because a lot of times, like I, I did do that where I did send an email out to like a beach body lead and then they don't ever respond most of the time. Sometimes they do, but not always. So um, it's, I'd rather, I mean, the Instagram people like Jennifer and Brett and Lindsay, like I've actually become really good friends with these people. So to me, that seems more real to me. And that kind of brings the joy into the business because you're meeting new people, you're helping people. And um, I don't know, you're just like real genuine. I think it's a genuine connection. Um, there was something- How often do you do calls to action in your stories? Um, I, I've been trying to do, I'd say probably a couple times a week if I would say consistently. That would be polls. Like, you know, do you want more information? And I don't remember how I exa exactly say it, but I'll generally do that on the tail end of my workout clips in the morning. Um, and I'm not a fan of putting my workouts out there, but I have come to just, it's sort of like, it's sort of like that very first time I ever posted my, my, whatever you call it, coming out post. I hit the send button. I slammed my laptop down and I ran out of the room. And that's how I dealt with my first post ever to say I was a coach because I, I was not a social media person before ever. Like maybe once in a blue moon, I would post and now I'm posting every single day. And I'm sure my family are like, what, what, what is going on here? But it's just changed you so much. It, like you can just be you. Um, then uh, I talked about no scripts. Um, um, building that relationship and getting them over to Facebook. And like I said, sometimes they won't, in which case I will send a Beachbody the sizzle video. I'll send that out, but I will explain to them. In fact, I just signed up a girl and she is debating on signing as a coach now just because she liked the energized sample I sent her. Um, after she buys a challenge pack, like I send a little gift package to every single person that purchased a challenge pack. And I've gotten a lot of extra sales out of that, like other stuff, like if they bought a challenge pack with Shakeology, then they'll buy, they, oh, I really like that Energize because you know, who wouldn't? Um, and so they'll, they'll get that. So she's thinking about that and wanting to do the discount coach thing, but I'm finding it difficult for me to actually explain it in such a way that's easy for her to understand because she's not on Facebook. Like I, that is the breakdown for me that I'm struggling with, but um, she, I, I think I can get her that way. But um, I told her when I sent her the MBF sizzle video, look, you're not even getting half the information. The information in that info page is awesome. So if you ever change your mind, please let me know. And I was trying to like talk her into it, but she just wasn't buying it. She's like, I don't do Facebook. So that's fine, whatever. But she bought a challenge pack. So I mean, she got herself started and she's, and then of course now they're kind of like on their own floating. I don't do bod groups. I haven't had time to sit down and look at that either. I feel like I'm letting the ball down on so many different things, but I just have to keep my blinders on and do what's working for me now 
knowing that I'm probably going to have to switch gears here soon. If I didn't work full time, I know I could sit down and hash out an email newsletter. I know I'd have time to, you know, work on getting a bod group up, I, you know, even my team page, like I'm just, I'm struggling there, but I'd rather have those conversations in Instagram and really try to help people because that's my mission, I guess, as a coach. So, um, I think that's probably, I feel like there was something else I wanted to mention and I thought of it when I was talking and I can't remember, but I mean, if you have questions, let me know. I have a question. Yeah, I would love to open it up for questions. Terry, go can ahead. You hear me? Terry, can you hear me? I see you. Hi. So I have a question because I, so I, I get contacts on Instagram and I, you know, start having conversations with people, but I have such a hard time converting them into, you know, because to me, the challenge groups and the, and the community is such a big part of like the enthusiasm and getting people involved. So if they don't come over, I really struggle with how to keep them engaged. Like, so for the people that you have like that, do you follow up with them more regularly? I mean, you're so busy. I mean, how do you keep track of the people that aren't in the challenge group where, you know, I'm not, I'm like a fraction of your busy. And so I rely on other coaches to kind of like pick it up. No, seriously. Like, you know, cause that's <laughs> part of, that's part of the, <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's part of the great thing about being in the group. Right. So like people are less likely to fall through the cracks. So what do you do? Well, people? even the people that are in the group, like I've lost count how many people like in fit sisterhood in our challenge group, I've added so many people over the huh. course years who have, you know, and at the end of the year, I message every single one of them and I ask them, Hey, you weren't really engaging in, in the group here this year. Do you want me to take you out for 2021? You know, that's what I'll be saying. Like I did for 2020. A lot of times they're like, no, 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 I, I do. I, I, they might look at the stuff, but they're not engaging. So you feel like they're not connected. Now I know that's not your, that your, it's not your question, yeah, but, yeah, but even right. those people are hard to keep up with because I've got too many now. But I, I have a running list. I, I do keep that, and um, I'm not good at keeping up with that. So I need to add like the new people as I get them, so that they don't get lost through the cracks. But I try to follow up with them once a week, or once every. It's usually like once every other week, if I'm being honest, just because it, just the sheer volume of other stuff. <laughs> because then I feel like I need to also. I like I feel like my team needs me too, and I'm just like, where do I go? And it can be overwhelming if you let it. But I remember that's a choice. So remember that. <laughs> But yeah, I have that's a, once a week. I have a Mine texts a lot too. Um, not that you asked me, but I usually once a week I have a list also, and I send them a message once a week, and then they have my phone number if they want to text, and they they kind of take the lead on that. But I'll send a message once a week via text. Just usually mm -hmm. on my phone, I do a voice message and just really quick, like just, you know, I just wanted to check in, see how you're doing. But also I set that expectation, you know, at the beginning, and like, what do you want me to do if you fall off. What do you want me to do if you're not responding? How do you want me to handle that? Do you want me to stalk you? Do you want me to give you a call? Do you want to like, how do you want to handle that? You know, if you fall off the, if you fall off the face of the earth, what would you like me to do? Um, because some people are like, yes, please come find me. Don't let me do that. Don't let me give up on myself. Don't let me whatever. But then there are other people who, um, you know, they're not quite the same. So, um, I just ask them and to me, for me, it's about expectations. And so I just put that out there. And then the way I look at it too is, I mean, day. we're all adults. And I say this sometimes in my video, you probably know, like it's your responsibility. Like you put skin in the game, you got the challenge pack. Now it's, it's up to you. Like we'll guide you, we'll, we'll coach you, but really you got to do the work. You got to show up for yourself. Um, but yeah, definitely check in and still follow up. Cause some people aren't comfortable either with like, I have a couple of people that message me one-on-one -on -one continually and that's okay. Yeah. I do. Can I, I still have the floor. Can I ask two more questions? <laughs> yes, counselor. I don't know. I haven't, I'm, the second one, did you say that you like sometimes, and I've, I've found myself doing this, like when you do a call to action on Instagram, even if it's somebody that's like, it's the very first time they've responded to you or like a story. Do you invite? Cause I've done that. Like, you know, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I wouldn't be shy from that. Sometimes um, in the polls, especially they'll say, Oh, I clicked that by mistake, but I've been trying to purposely stage it 
over to the left. I'm like, well, how are you, like, where are you clicking? Yeah. I'm clicking through a story, which by the way, I, I don't spend, like, I don't, that's my downfall. Like, I don't look at anybody's stories. Maybe it's a downfall. I keep my, like, to me, I feel like that would miss, and I know that I'm totally not answering your question, but I would, that, I, that was the thing I wanted to talk about earlier. That can mess up my mojo with my, what I want to post, what I want to do stories. Like I will end up comparing myself. Like maybe I should be talking about that or, you know, um, I don't follow any, like I just do my thing. I don't even follow, I don't even look at my own coach story, coaches stories. And I probably should more often than I do. Um, but the poll, if they answered it, even if it's wrong, they'll tell you, I mean, it, I would invite them. I would not be shy. And then do you, since you don't search hashtag, because I suck at them too. I, it's like, I'm the world's most boring person because I cannot come up with hashtags that like apply to me, right? Do you, do people, do you just, how do you find people then on Instagram? Is it just, you just rely on people finding your, your posts or? No, I'll look at um, like that modern farmhouse or whatever it's called. Like I look at that and then I follow people. Like I look to see, you want to definitely look if I'll look at their profile first because I've become more particular now like I don't want just any coach on my team <laughs> I know that sounds terrible but I like it's not just a body to me like I'm in it for the real thing and I'm, I can't be hand-holding people I can't be dragging people along like I want the real deal and if they look like they're a little flaky because sometimes you can tell like you can tell if it's, or if they're not even on Instagram very often or they're, they haven't posted since July of 2019 it's probably not your person like you know especially if you're looking for business builders um, challengers are even the same way in, in, in a sense because I've had a couple of those which they just suck the energy right out of me and I, I can't be having that I don't have time for that <laughs> Harry, what works really well for me is I have um, some kind of micro influencers that I follow, like accounts that I really like and um, that are like 100% me. Like, I feel like those people are my people. Um, like when I look at their page, everything just resonates with me or whatever. Like I find a few of those accounts and I say micro influencers because they don't have millions of people. I mean, if they have millions of followers, they're probably not that much. Like they're not your person 100% because none of us is like, you know, is Nike. We're all like a lot more, um, you know, just a lot more sort of, we have idiosyncrasies and, and other things that kind of, may, you know, well, let me speak for myself. Um, yeah. just, you know, a little, we're more nuanced, I guess. And, um, and so I find those people that I really click with that have like 50,000 to 90,000, like some, usually even under 100,000. And I set up my notifications such that I get notified every time they post or every time they do, um, like you can do IGTV or post or something like that. And then what I do myself is I go to, when I sit down, I want to go to their stuff immediately and look at the posts that they just did. And I engage immediately with the people who are engaging on their post because I know that those people are active on Instagram because they're in real time, like commenting on that, the other person's post. I know that they're probably going to be my people if they're, if they like the same, you know, micro influence or whatever. And I just start having conversations with people that way. And I've gotten a lot of new followers in the last few months because of that. So I've grown pretty steadily, about 100 followers a week-ish, 90-ish a, a week. Um, but just basically doing that, like as soon as they post, because I'm notified, I go to that account. And then I, I mean, I can't always do it immediately when they post, but I'll just have like put a little reminder in my head, okay, so-and-so posted. And then I know that when I'm going to sit down for my power hour, I'm going to that post and I'm going to try to interact with people who, um, who commented there, because if they're commenting on somebody's post, then they're active on Instagram and they are they're ahead of the game because they're active on Instagram. So you're not going to have to teach them, you know, every single thing. So that's, that's something that's working for me. But the key is finding those accounts that are, you, you know, that are very much like your people. Thank but you. Yeah, that's what I'm working on. Not, then you'll never run out of people. Cause I always look at, I do that. And then I also just look at their followers and I interact with them. Like I try to make friends. Like, that's my thing. I'm just going to go make some friends today. And so I sit down like that without an agenda and just think about, okay, who do I want to be friends with? And then like on that list, like who would I hang out with? Who, who would I want to be friends with? And those are the people I follow, like the ones that bring me joy. Because if, it, if it's somebody I'm like, oh, I don't know, then I'm not, no, I'm not, not doing that. But I do also, to Melissa's point, think that Instagram is so different than Facebook and that it is people come to Instagram to be inspired. They want to see beautiful pictures and blog type posts and things like that. They want to be inspired or entertained. 
they want to be educated sometimes, or, and they want to purchase. So Facebook is very different. Facebook is your friends, the people you know in elementary school, the people you know, like friend of a friend, like they're people in real life. So they're posting their kids' pictures and this or that, you know, what's going on like in their day to day. It's very different than Instagram. Like people don't go to Facebook for that reason. People go to Facebook to like see what their family and friends are up to. People go to Instagram to be inspired. So it's completely different. So if people are in my store on my Instagram account, then I know that they are considering like what I'm doing. They're checking it out. So I feel like that's, if they're in my store, I'm going to go meet them. I'm going to talk to them. So I have no problem inviting somebody who's checking out my stories or who, even if it's not a call to action, like I have no problem starting up a conversation with them or inviting them to something or whatever, because people are there for a, they've chosen to watch my stories. They've chosen to come follow me. Facebook, mm -hmm. You're my neighbor, so you're my friend on Facebook. It's just exactly. way different. You know, they don't want to unfriend you because they might see you in real life. Whereas on Instagram, they're choosing to be there. And so you have a lot more leverage to do what you want to do on Instagram. So um, I also, if you have reels, then do them. I don't have that feature yet, but the people who are getting all the, um, the viewers right now, your story views might be down like the last couple weeks. It's because they're all going to people with reels. So they're giving the priority right now to reels, which I don't have. It's kind of like the TikTok stuff, but you don't have to dance because that, that, I mean, I'm a dancer. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> I'm not dancing on reels. Like I'm just not, but you can do like cooking and people, there's this thing. Like a friend of mine had like hundreds of thousands of people, followers on TikTok before she left TikTok because of like, I don't know, Russian involvement or something. But anyway, I've never been on TikTok, but she was on TikTok and she would get like hundreds of thousands of followers like watching her eat. Like it was a thing. Like I, it had a name. I don't even remember what the name of it is. But people would get on there and like you can search for it. It starts with an M. I don't even remember the name, the word. But you search for that and there are people, they're just people eating and like talking about what they're eating. It's the like, what? I, I was like, people watch that. People care that much. She's like a 65 year old woman who had all these people going to watch her eat. I like, just eat like, here's my carrots. And like, I mean, it, it blew my ever loving mind. But anyway, so you can do lots of things. You don't like think outside the box. You don't have to dance. You can do lots of things on reels. Um, but so, you know, you can eat. <laughs> People will like to watch that stuff, apparently. I don't know. I have that feature. I just, I haven't gotten to that point. Like, I, I thought they were dumb. Like, I've looked at some of them. I'm like, it just seems very unnatural to me. Yeah, <laughs> like, you don't have to dance. I think yeah. of Sean T, and I'm like, I'm not dancing. Like, I mean, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago, but at this point in my yeah. life, I just don't see myself like, you know, busting out the, I don't know. I just, I just don't see that happening, but you know, who knows? Maybe we'll have some wine one night. <laughs> hey, I wanted to, um, <laughs> add to the hashtag. Happen. <laughs> I wanted to add to the hashtag, hashtag thing. Terry was asking, uh, you sent me to some videos when I, I'm new to IG. I only have like a hundred followers. Um, but she in, was, uh, posted something it said uh, displaypurpose.com you can go there and kind of put in your interest and it gives you some hashtags there and you can look and I haven't done that yet but I it does and there's some good ones and then also when you start to type something in like I don't know like let's say you wanted to do something with blonde hair if you start typing in like blonde whatever it'll pull up like all the in Instagram it'll pull up like all the popular hashtags you never ever want to use any of the ones that are in like the millions or like have high numbers because the whole purpose of them is to, is for people to find you. You're not, you're going to be, if you're in the millions, it's going to maybe show yours for like half a second. And for people who are searching for that hashtag, it shows the big accounts. And so you're not going to get any, anybody from those hashtags. You need to get some that are much, much smaller and more sort of niche. And so like 10,000 ish would be a great number. But I think too on stories, you can use the bigger hashtags. Yeah, the bigger ones are good for stories. Yeah. And I'm not good with doing that. But you I forget on stories. Put it down really, really tiny and move it off to the side. Um, you don't have to put like hashtag fitness. Geotags are really helpful too, Keely. Yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely geotag, even if it's not where you currently are, but like it's a place you're talking about or um, like sometimes I will in my stories lately with the running stories, like I will tag, um, like this nature preserve that's near us that a lot of people like to go to run at. So even though I'm not personally running over there, like I just will put that because people who are searching for that hashtag will see your stuff. 
And every single day, once you look at your insights, a lot of my people are coming from the geotags. Okay, so you hashtag in your stories and in the feed? Yeah, hit location. Yeah, you can hit, you can hashtag in the story and, and, um, and in your feed, yeah. But in, if you go to location in your stories, um, that's the geotag and just put wherever, wherever you are. And it can be like a specific place, like a store or something like that, or it can be a city. So it can be, or like a, I mean, it can be anything, like a very specific, like Carrollton Public Library, or it can be, you know, mm -hmm. like it can be very specific or really broad. But I get a lot that way too. A lot of Dallas people and whatnot. Melissa, can I ask, so when you do your stories in the morning, how do you find it's the easiest, like when you open your Instagram, are you doing then and clicking and doing live or clicking stories or are you recording it on your phone and then posting it in the stories and Instagram? Oh, you're talking, yeah, no, I don't do live at all ever. I probably should do more, like I should do a live, I should be doing a live on Facebook too, but even like this team call, like I get my words all bumbled up and I just like, I'm, I'm not to that point where I can just get on there live, but I will just open up the story. And usually it'll be like for my workout ones, I do my workout because that's my time. And then I, I know I make a note of what moves I want to use. Cause I use four each day. So it's like four, four and four, and then I'm done. <laughs> that's a lot of screen. Like, and they always tell you like, don't make the little dots at the top and very, very rarely do I now today I have a lot of stories for some reason but um generally during the week it's even worse but I always just open up the story feature I don't do live so then when you're talking in the morning when you hit the story feature it just naturally goes from one to the other like as you're talking yeah. right it used to go for like 10 frames but now it stops at four so I have okay. to get done what I'm doing in four otherwise I have to continue on and that's just too hard to do <laughs> Okay, I thought I was doing something wrong because mine started doing that. So that's why I was asking. I was like, did something change that I don't know of? I think some of us have all, like Corey doesn't have reels, I have reels. Like they just roll out different things because yeah, it used to be like I could pick one of the 10 that came out and I could actually like kind of do a video of the whole move. But now it's like, you got four shots to do it. And then I just get rid of the other three, just use the four, the one that I like. And if you do like a video on your phone and then put it into your stories, it's 50, like around 50, 52 seconds. Yeah. Uh, it'll, until it'll, it it'll, like, cuts you off. Mm -hmm. so, like, if you're talking, you want to make sure that you get it within 52 seconds or stop your video and then do a whole new one. Yep. That's a good tip. All right, any other questions before we go to bed? <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. We appreciate your time. I hope your elbow does not keep you up tonight. <laughs> I Those just actions work. Pills. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right. I'm glad I did upper body today because it ain't gonna happen tomorrow. <laughs> no, I hope, I just hope you're not out like he thought, like he said. Potentially you could Well, be. that was the option. I could not do anything. The injections or that. By itself for six to 12 months. Yeah, not the yeah. I said, Goodness. no, I work out every day. You got to fix me up today. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, God. There's somebody just joining the call. I might have missed the time memo. Um, anyway, thank I you do so much. You. The time change was nice. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, I will see you guys later. Have an awesome rest of your night. And I will post the recording as soon as it Thank you, Melissa. Thanks.